Diversity of fish. Uh, the first class of fish that we're going to talk about is the jawless fish. Uh, the jawless fish not only lack jaws, but they also lack scales. Uh, they also lack paired fins and bony skeletons. Uh, minxie, which is a hagfish, have a notochord throughout their life. Uh, they do develop gills. So our first, our hagfish uh, really doesn't fit any of the profiles of being a fish. Uh, it doesn't really fit the f uh, profile of being a vertebrate because it keeps that notochord. Um, but uh, they have the notochord, so they are considered cord so they are considered chordates. Um, the uh, the hagfish is almost blind. Uh, they can sense food through chemical receptors, and they can feed on dying or dead fish. Uh, basically, what happens is that they swim through their mouths or any other openings, and then eat the internal organs of any other fish. Uh, lampreys are jawless, lacking scales, lacking paired fins, and don't have a bony skeleton. But these are actually parasites that attach themselves to other fish and then feed on their blood or other bodily fluids. Our second type of fish is the cartilaginous fish. Um, this class contains approximately 850 different species of skates, rays, and sharks. They have jaws, lots of teeth, but if you remember, the teeth in these cartilaginous fish are actually um, modified scales. They have paired fins and a cartilage endoskeleton. The skeleton is made up of cartilage, which provides flexibility, but it also has some calcium carbonate in there to give it strength. These fish have 710 gill slits on each side of the pharynx and lack the gill covers found in bony fish. The chondrolycthian body is covered with uh, epidermal placoid scales. Um, developmental studies show that the teeth of sharks are these enlarged scales, like we mentioned. Um, the body of sharks and rays are streamlined with a pointed head and a tail that turns up at the end. Uh, one, of the, one of the main differences uh, between dolphins and sharks, they look very similar. But uh, sharks have this pointed up tail, whereas if we were dealing with a, if we were dealing with a dolphin, the tail would be, um, would be fl uh, flattened, would be flattened, not uh, not pointed. Um, sharks can sense chemicals in the water and can detect prey up to one kilometer away. Uh, when they move closer, their lateral line, which remember runs right about here that big difference between the dark and the lighter areas on it, uh, that lateral line detects vibrations in the water. And then once they get really close, uh, they use their vision and other receptors to detect bioelectric fields that can be given off by all animals. Interestingly enough, the largest sharks tend to be filter feeders, not the predators that we see in Hollywood movies. Um, Basking and, basking and whale sharks eat tons of crustaceans uh, that just filter from the water. Uh, most sharks, though, are fast-swimming, open-sea predators. The great white shark uh, feeds on dolphins and sea lions and seals, sometimes people. Um, the great whites will actually feed on basically anything it wants. Uh, rays and skates live on the ocean floor, uh, their pectoral fins are modified into these big wing-like structures. So what we see as these big wings are actually those modified pectoral fins, which we saw here. So those are similar structures. Uh, they swim very slowly. Stingrays have a venomous spine that they can use to kill prey. Um, the electric ray family can feed on fish that have been stunned with an electric shock of over 300 volts. Um, and then there's also sawfish, sawfish rays that have a large anterior saw that they use to slash through schools of fish. The last class is the ray-finned fish, or the bony fish. 
Uh, the ray finned fish include familiar species like tuna, bass, perch, and trout. Um, these tend to be the most successful and diverse of all the vertebrates. Uh, when we talk about vertebrates, over half of the vertebrate species are, uh, are ray finned fish. Uh, thin, bony supports with uh, radiating bones hold the fins away from the body. Ray finned fish obtain their food by filter feeding and preying on insects and other animals. Their skin's covered by either the senoid or the cycloid scales. Uh, these scales are homologous to our own hair or feathers in birds, uh, being derived from the same embryonic tissue. The gills of this group do not open separately and are covered by an, uh, it's called an opercleum. Op so we can see that here, if we, and we can see that here, this is kind of reflected away, it's kind of cut away that allows us access to the gills. Um, ray finned fish have a swim bladder, that's going to be this main structure right in here, and remember that swim bladder uh, will inflate or deflate, changing the buoyancy of the, uh, of the fish. Uh, if we look back, sharks if, and our cartilaginous fish, uh, they lack, they lack a swim bladder, uh, which means that sharks have to keep swimming in order to keep breathing. Um, however, bony fish can sleep without, uh, without sinking. Uh, the swim bladder uh, acts very much like a basilic tank and a submarine that uh, controls controls its buoyancy. Uh, salmon, trout, eels can migrate from fresh to salt water, uh, but must adjust their kidney and gills function to the toxicity of their environments. Uh, in fresh water, the, fresh, the fish is hypertonic relative to its aqueous environment. Water is constantly flooding into the fish and must be removed by the fish's excretory system. In seawater, in seawater, in salt water, the fish is now hypertonic uh, or isotonic relative to the seawater, requiring conservation of the body water. Uh, remember that water is going to flow from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So in a in fresh water, uh, the concentration of water is greater outside of the fish than inside of the fish, and then that's reversed um, in salt water. Bony fish depend on color vision to detect both rivals and mates. Um, sperm and eggs are released into the water with not much parental, parental care for the newborn. Um, most fish have fertilization and um, embryonic development taking place outside of the female's body. Uh, that's not to say that there are uh, some species that do exhibit some parental care, but uh, majority it's uh, spawning and uh, that's it. Uh, in addition to ray finned fish, there's also lobe finned fish. Uh, this group includes six species of lungfish and one species of chloranthia. This is, uh, these guys have muscular fins with large jointed bones attaching to the fins, uh, attaching the fins to the body. The lobe finned fish have fleshy fins supported by central bones homologous to the bones in your arms and legs. Uh, these fins underwent modification, becoming the limbs of amphibians and their evolutionary descendants, such as lizards, canaries, dinosaurs, and humans. The lungfish are also a small group found mostly in freshwater, stagnant water, or ponds that dry up in Africa, South America, and Australia. And here, if we come in, we can see uh, the humerus, the ulna, the humerus, the ulna, and the radius are arm bones. We see a pelvis here, and then bones leading, a femur bone leading into the pelvic fin, followed by the fibia and the tibia. Um, so we can see eventually leading uh, 
to amphibians that will be able to move on land. Uh, remember these lobe-finned fish also oftentimes have a primitive lung that will allow them to exist outside, outside of the water uh, for short periods of time.